Hello, my name is Indukan Joku. I'm your lecturer for PL 445, Law of Indukan Evidence Joku. 1. Today we are going to discuss an important topic in the law of evidence. We are going to look at the nature of evidence. At the end of this lecture, we will be able to understand and appreciate the nature of evidence, the various definitions of evidence as offered by scholars. Beyond that, we will also look at the various classifications of law of evidence. This will enable you to prepare for the other concepts that we are going to study in the course of this work. Thank you, you're welcome. For the other concept that we are going to study in the course of this work. Thank you, you're welcome. Once again, you are welcome to this lecture. We are looking at the definition and classification of evidence. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain the nature of evidence differentiate between procedural and substantive laws, define evidence, and identify and explain the different classifications of evidence. Generally speaking, law is broadly divided into two categories. Procedural law, which deals with tactics and procedure, forms of action, proof of matters before the court, rules of court, all these belong to procedural branch of the law or adjective branch of the law. You also have another broad division, which is the substantive laws. These substantive laws contain the actual content of the laws themselves. They contain the laws themselves. They deal with the actual content of the laws. For example, the criminal code at section 383 defines stealing. It says that any person who fraudulently takes, who fraudulently takes a thing capable of being stolen or fraudulently converts to his own use or to the use of any other person, anything capable of being stolen, is said to steal that thing. That is the definition of stealing in accordance with the criminal code. Now, if somebody is charged in to court on the allegation that he stole what does not belong to him, those facts must be proved before the court. The constituting elements of that offense of stealing, which is in the criminal which is in the criminal code, must be proved in court. And how is it proved? By tendering facts which tend to prove that offense now the process of proving that the committal of that offense and the tendering of those facts are actually the province of evidence so evidence belongs to the procedural branch of law and evidence is primarily concerned with the ways and manners of making facts known to the court that is what evidence is concerned with and usually evidence is distinguished from inferences and arguments these facts when they are tendered in court the court usually draws inferences from those facts and reaches certain conclusions those inferences are usually not classified as evidence and of course of course these are, the arguments are submissions of, of counsel in, in court in persuading the court to find in favor of his own client. Those arguments are not usually classified as evidence. So that is the nature of evidence. It concerns with the proof of matters before the court and it concerns with facts. How can facts be proved in court? look at the definition of evidence. Cross and Tapper defines evidence as courts of law usually have to find that certain facts exist before pronouncing on the rights, duties, and liabilities of the parties, and such as they will receive in furtherance of this task, 
is described as judicial evidence. If an individual, for example, goes to court and said, I have a plot of land in Blue Acre, and that plot of land is being trespassed upon by Mr. B, and I want the court to declare that I'm the one entitled to possession of that plot of land in Blue Acre. He wants the court to declare to declare that he is entitled to a right of possession. But before the court can find in his favor, certain facts must be proved in court. It must be shown, for example, that he is actually in possession. And he must prove possession. And he also, must also prove that they are trespassed by the person who is alleging, who is the defendant who are trespassed on the land. So, it is the process of proving these facts that evidence is concerned with. Because the court will look at what is before it, the fact before it, before it can make such declaration. And if somebody is alleging that his rights have been violated, it is incumbent on him to show that such rights have been violated. Maybe by the security agencies, he must turn that before the court facts which substantiate his allegation so that the court may find in his favor. And if we look at what Blacks has said, Blacks Law Dictionary defines evidence as something including testimony, documents, and tangible objects that tend to prove or disprove the existence of an alleged fact. Such testimonies may be oral assertions in court, oral evidence. Documentary evidence, for example, and tangible objects such as real objects in proof of certain facts. And if you now at the next slide, you'll be expected to provide an answer to the class activity which is provided therein. Discuss the meaning and nature of evidence. Now, let's look at classification of evidence. For example, oral evidence. What is oral evidence? According to Cross, oral evidence is the assertion of a human being offered as proof of the truth of that which is asserted. Oral evidence is the most common form of evidence. And one of the advantages of oral evidence is that it enables the court to test the veracity of the person who is giving of the oral evidence, such as through cross-examination. It also enables the court to watch the demeanor of the person who is giving evidence to determine whether that person is a, a witness of truth. That is oral evidence. Now, what is then is documentary evidence? Documentary evidence are statements that are made in documents and is offered in court in proof of any fact. What makes it documentary evidence is the content of the document itself, not the document. Because if, for example, there's an issue as to ownership of a particular piece of land and somebody brings out his deed of assignment, improve. It is the content of the deed of assignment that makes that document documentary evidence. If somebody brings a book to court and wants to use it to prove a particular fact, such as the content of the book, it is the content of that book that makes that book documentary evidence, not otherwise. What then is real evidence? What is real evidence? Real evidence is any material object offered in court in its, for its inspection. If an individual kills another person and the person has been charged to court, the knife which the person used in killing the disease may be tendered in court, that knife is real evidence. And if the accused person killed the disease by shooting him, the gun with which the accused person shot the deceased may be tendered in court as evidence who, 
of which the accused person used in killing the deceased that gun is regarded as real evidence what of direct evidence direct evidence has to do with personal knowledge of what the witness saw or what he had the witness is given personal knowledge of what he knows not what he was not that he was informed by another person it is a, it is it is a proof of a fact by a witness who perceived the fact he is given with the relevant sense if a mr a comes to court and said i saw the accused person when he took a gun and shot the deceased that is a direct testimony of what happened now you have to differentiate that with hearsay evidence which is a statement and that statement may be oral it may be written made by a witness made by somebody who is not otherwise in court it was a it was a statement made by somebody who is not in court giving evidence the person who is in court is relying on what he was told by another person and is offering the court to believe that what he's telling the court is the truth as related to the matter in issue what then is circumstantial evidence circumstantial evidence is different from direct evidence sometimes there's no direct evidence on an issue but the court has to find as to whether that particular offense for example has been committed or not by the accused therefore circumstantial evidence consists of several ancillary pieces of evidence and those pieces of evidence none of them is direct on the facts in issue but if you combine all those ancillary pieces of evidence it will lead to a justification or a finding or a conclusion that the fact in issue is proved but before the court will rely on circumstantial evidence that circumstantial evidence must be cogent it must be compelling and leads to no other conclusion than the guilt of the accused Look at the case of State versus Honor. Sorry, Honor versus State, 1985-3, Nigeria Weekly Law Report, Part 12, page 236. Where the, where the Supreme Court was saying that circumstantial evidence must be mathematically correct in order for the court to rely on it. In the next slide, you will be expected to provide an answer to a class activity. Differentiate between oral evidence and documentary evidence. In this lecture, we have looked at the meaning of evidence, the nature of evidence, the definition of evidence, and differentiate between procedural and substantive laws, and we looked at the various classifications of evidence. Thank you.